Hey y'all. Same day. I was wondering um, earlier, like, where were you guys raised? Where did you spend your childhood? Now, y'all, I was all over the place. Wow, I got one of those big old bouncy things. Um, anyway, I was all over the place. But when I was about eight, I think, maybe nine, my dad got stationed at um, Jacksonville Air Force Base in Arkansas. That was about 35 miles, I believe it was south of Little Rock. So, um, they rented a house somewhere. I don't even remember it. But my mother got this job as um, the night manager of a liquor store. Now, y'all, when your parents are alcoholics, that's not really a good job for your mom to have. But she did. Now, the man that owned the store, his name was L.B. Harvey. He was a stout guy. Not very tall. But, you know, stout. Anyway, my mother worked for him for a while, and uh, his wife's name was Jean, and they lived in BB, which was about uh, 15, 18 minutes away, not very far. And so my mom and dad got to be friends with LB and Jean. They would get together on the weekends, usually at Jean and LB's house, and um, LB owned a dairy farm. So we would go to their place, to the farm, on the weekends, and our parents would play cards and drink and smoke. And so um, they had a son named Ronnie who was older. He was, gosh, I don't know, eight years older than me or something like that. Anyway, and then they had a daughter. Go ahead, jump in front of me. Um, they had a daughter, and um, she and I, she was a year older than me, Ruth Ellen. Ruth Ellen and Deborah Joy. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Ruth Ellen had the life that I wanted, except her dad was kind of crazy. He had a really bad temper. But anyway, um, she had the life I wanted because she had a German Shepherd dog, a couple of cats, some rabbits, a goat, a bunch of cows, a couple of bulls, and horses. She had a huge white horse named Lady. Lady tried to take my head off one time. Rode me right underneath the barn door. <laughs> if I hadn't laid down on her neck, I wouldn't be making these videos, that's for sure. But anyway, so Ruth Ellen had the life that I wanted. I had always loved horses and animals, period. And we had never had any. Not a cat, not a dog, not a rabbit, not a turtle, not a fish. Nothing. And I can't say really that I blame my parents because with my dad being in the Air Force, we did move quite a bit. Well, I thought that I had died and gone to heaven, y'all. Jean and L.B. had 
talked my parents into moving to BB. <laughs> yes, named after the man who invented the BB gun. Four BBs. I don't know. Anyway, they talked my parents into moving out there and in the middle of 80 acres down a lane from their house they had a milk hands house and that was a two bedroom one bathroom little living room kitchen two porches one on the front and one on the side so they talked my parents into moving into that house rent free but they had to fix it up y'all it was a mess it had been empty for years and years it had been empty and it had never been cleaned after the last milk can had moved out it had a tin roof on it and those two great big porches wooden ones of course and our front door had a screen door y'all know the wooden ones those wooden screen doors and it had the spring across it so when you opened it it was that spring that would slam it shut <laughs> i can't remember how many times my poor mother would say don't slam the i won't say what she said but she said it many, many times. Now, when my dad was home, it was miraculous how we could remember to not slam the screen door. Could have been that belt he wore. But anyway, we had a big mulberry tree out in the backyard with a tire swing on it. Now, mulberries are terrible, y'all. They're kind of like blueberries. And we used to walk around in those things and you know, we were barefooted all the time outside, and our feet were always blue. Well, I finally got to have a kitty cat. And then I got a dog. And I wanted a horse so bad. I begged my daddy, please, please let me have a horse. Please let me have a horse. LB said I could keep it in the pasture up with Ruth Ellen's horse. Please let me have a horse. He wouldn't let me have a horse. I cried all the time. I wanted a horse so bad. So one day Ruth Ellen called me and boy we ran that path back and forth between those two houses. We ran that thing out. She was either at our house or I was up there at her house. So she called me one afternoon and um, she said, I want you to come up to the house. So I said, okay. So I yelled at my mother. I said, I'm going over to Ruth Ellen's. Okay, whatever. Get the hell out. <laughs> so anyway, I had remember seeing LB leave and he was pulling the horse trailer behind his pickup truck. Well, when I got up there to Ruth Ellen's house, it was sitting down the down the, the driveway turned into a little road that went out in the pasture. And there was a huge double-sided red barn out there and that's um, where all the hay was stored. And so, um, he had pulled way down there by the gate like he was going out to the barn. And so I got up there and Ruth Ellen goes, come on, come on. So I ran down there with her and LB had gone to an auction and bought me a horse. Y'all, that was a mean, he was a mean man, but I could have kissed him. He went to the auction and bought me a Palomino stallion. 
Who would buy a stallion for a 10-year-old girl, 11-year-old girl? It was probably really cheap. Anyway, I named my horse Trigger. I had been riding some of my friend's horses, so, you know, I knew how to ride when I got my horse. And when you live out in the country like that, and the only time you get to town is when you get on that school bus, you spend a lot of time with your friends that live in, oh, two, three mile radius. You get together a lot on the weekends and ride horses together. And I used to have to ride double with uh, Ruth Ellen. So I would have to ride behind her saddle, which, trust me, is not fun. Those big old western saddles are huge. But I would go anyway. I did not care. And I got lucky sometimes, and the other kids would let me ride their horse. So, y'all, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. I mean, we had forts out in the woods, and we would pack lunches and go down to the creek. And we would wade around down there, and the water was so cold, and it would be so hot. It would be like in the low 100s, humidity, 90%. It was crazy how hot it would get. So, you know, I spent a lot of time reading. I've always spent a lot of time reading. I love it. I always have. I learned to read really early. And um, my teachers and librarian didn't think I read all the books that I checked out of the library. And I won a contest one time, and they questioned my mother, does Deborah Joy really read all these books? I would read three or four books a week. And she, it kind of pissed her off. <laughs> A lot of things pissed my mom off. But she got mad because they thought I was cheating. So anyway, one of my favorite things to do, and I rode bareback, y'all. I did not like those big saddles. I didn't like the stirrups. I just didn't like them. So I would throw a blanket over Trigger's back, and I rode bareback all the time. Well, I can't tell y'all about that, but let's just say that until Trigger got gelded, his stuff kind of hung. Crazy. Gross. But anyway, he did get gelded because he was, he was really a feisty guy. And there were a lot of uh, mares that my friends had. And so he would get, um, he would get feisty with those mares. So um, one of my favorite things was to grab a book, Trixie Belden, books about horses, um, just all kinds of stuff. I read everything I could get my hands on. I read encyclopedias. I read the dictionary. Um, I had a huge vocabulary for a kid. But it's because I read all the time. So, um, and I got teased for that. Kids made fun of me if I'd use a word that they didn't really know what it was or they didn't understand. They used to call me names tell me I thought I was uppity putting on airs do y'all remember that phrase but anyway I didn't care it was not going to stop me from reading and it wasn't going to stop me from using my vocabulary 
Now, I had two dogs when we lived out there on the farm. Let me say, I love thunderstorms. And you get a lot of them in Arkansas. And I loved hearing that rain pouring down on that tin roof. Oh, I can remember that now. I'd have my window open and my bedroom was right over by that side front porch, front side porch. And um, the breeze would come through my window on my bed. Oh my gosh, y'all. I love that so much. Now, my parents didn't allow the animals to be in the house, which was very common back then. I mean, dogs and cats were supposed to be outside. So my dogs would sleep out on the porch, and I had a door that went from my bedroom out to the porch. So when everybody went to bed, and I thought my parents were asleep, I'd open the door and I'd let my dogs come in and sleep with me. And my cat too. And I had to wake up real early in the morning and make sure that they went back outside because I would have really got in trouble for that. But I had two dogs when I was a kid. This is gonna be a really long video, y'all. Um, one of them was a chow chow and she was a full-blooded chow and she was red and of course her tongue was, had big black spots on it. Her name was Cuddles. Now can you imagine having a chow named Cuddles? Chows have a bad reputation y'all. Like a lot of dogs do. Doberman Pinchers used to have a terrible um, reputation but my dog was so sweet my hair was way down like to my waist and I'd lay down on the front porch and she would grab a mouthful of my hair and tug and try to pull me across the porch <laughs> that hurt um, she was the sweetest dog and I love cuddles so much but she went into heat and some boy dog came by and she left. She left me for a man. <laughs> it broke my heart. Then I had a friend named Ronnie and I was a young teenager by then. I think I was 13 or 14, I was probably, no, I had to be 12. Anyway, I was dating Ronnie Weatherly and um, we flirted with each other at school is what it amounted to. And so um, I wanted another dog. And Ronnie had a full-blooded um, collie. She was a beautiful dog, y'all. She was gorgeous. She looked just like Lassie. Just like her. Beautiful dog. So, they had her bred with another collie. And so, I was always talking about, I want another dog. I want another dog. And so, he said, well, let me talk to my dad. And, um, air conditioners cooling a little too much so anyway he came to school one day and he said Deborah Joy my daddy said that uh, you could have one of our pups if she has more than six I was overjoyed I mean I was like so ecstatic and every day at school I'd say Ronnie how's your dog doing When's she gonna have her puppies? When's she gonna have her puppies? <laughs> he got so sick of bugging me about him, uh, me bugging him about that. So finally she had her puppies and I went over there to see them. And of course we couldn't, you know, we couldn't take them away from their mommy until they were um, at least six 
and eight weeks old is really better. So one day he said, okay, you can come this weekend and you can pick out your pup. And I said, I can pick out anyone I want. And he goes, yeah, you can have anyone you want. And so I got over to his house. My dad took me. I had to beg him. So we got out of the car and all these puppies are running around. She had had seven puppies I left out. So I sat down on the ground and all the puppies were coming over. That's a new Starbucks. Well, I'll be dim. Um, anyway, um, I was sitting there on the ground and all these puppies are running around and they were, they're yelping and they're barking and they're running into me and over me and playing. They were so adorable. Beautiful puppies. There was one little puppy sitting over in the corner of the house and the porch just watching. So I told Ronnie, I said, I want that one. I want that puppy right over there. He goes, no, you can't have that one. That one's mine. And his dad said, Ronnie, you told Deborah Joy she could have, ow, ow, just bent my thumbnail all the way back, y'all. That hurts. Anyway, he said, you told Deborah Joy she could have any puppy she wanted. And that's the one she wants. And I felt kind of bad, y'all, but not bad enough. So I took that puppy, and it was a boy, and I named him Rex. There's more to Rex's story, but this video is really long. So I'm going to let y'all go. I'm on my way over to the movies, and I'll let y'all know how this movie is. So I'll talk to you later. Bye now.